Hello, so it is official. All of the Celestial cards have finally been revealed. There's going to be another six that I'm going to share with you. These are going to be the eight mana plus cards. All of these cards are really insane. I want to add also, if you're interested, come join the Discord. Everyone's talking about the cards there. I'll leave it down in the pinned comments. But these cards coming up are... <laughs> Let's just get into it. There's an eight mana slow spell. If you behold a celestial, obliterate all units with power three or less. This includes the deck as well. It's this little sun card here. This card, low key, <laughs> it's gonna hit some matchups. It's just, okay, so you have to behold a celestial, which means you have to discover another celestial that you do not play to set up for this card. So that's kind of cool that that's a thing. This is, if like, if you know your opponent's deck, and this card hits that deck really well. Ooh. <laughs> it's a little crazy. It's a very niche card. I don't expect to see this get played very often. And a lot of the time, you will blow up their deck from all their three cost followers, right? right? Actually, it's units as well. Sorry, it's units, so it includes champions. You can pretty much destroy Ezreal with this one card if we get to the late game enough. So that's a little crazy. But it's a very niche card. It's going to hit certain decks. And once you obliterate all their followers, they're going to start drawing into, you know, uh, units, sorry. They're going to start drawing into their more expensive cards. So it does have a little bit of downside. But, phew. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. But I don't think we're going to see this as often. Especially if it starts to become a regular thing, people just are going to build their decks differently. Dude, all of these Celestial cards are just unironically sh going to shape the meta without even seeing play a lot of the time it's so crazy how like you have to discover these singleton cards it's just really insane let's jump to the next card the immortal fire elusive eight mana six five when i'm summoned grant me plus one for each celestial card you have played this game the first time i would die fully heal me instead oh. <laughs> now i wonder what happens during combat so if you're swinging with the immortal fire if they kill it with vengeance, does it just continue to attack anyway? Because if that's how it interacts then, you may as well slap spell shield on this. You can silence it of course, whimsy it of course actually. Some of these cards that we're seeing is starting to make whimsy look like more of a considerable option, okay? Um, if that's how it works, and if you're attacking, it doesn't negate the attack, then it's really powerful. It's still really powerful, but if that's how it works, it gets a little bit more insane. Um, I don't think the whole... A lot of them are sharing the similar thing in terms of buffing their attacks from each Celestial you've played. I mean, you're not always going to get that much value from that. So kind of ignore that for a moment and think about the 8 mana 6-5 of the Elusive that doesn't die. That's still pretty good. Um, if you're playing enough Celestials, and I guess it's kind of crazy for the buff. Like, you'll at least maybe play two of them before this comes down. Like... Some of these late game Celestial cards really want you to build heavily into Evoke, which unironically is kind of a good thing. It like frees up a bit of breathing room for other decks to kind of build a strategy to counter it because they're obviously building so heavily into Celestial, into Evoke, etc. Which means that they're cutting a lot of other decent cards just to uh, be able to play this Invoke deck. Which also means, because we kind of firstly assumed aggro decks were going to die, but if people start to build really greedy uh, invoke decks, then it's going to free up a bit of breathing room for aggro decks to actually exist in the meta since most of the invoking units have very poor stat lines. And the, the amount of healing, there's no healing in any of these Celestial cards, which is really relevant. At least I'm pretty sure there's not. Unless I missed something. No, I don't think there's any healing. Okay, the next card, Supernova. If you behold a Celestial card, obliterate two... Uh, enemies. It's a double vengeance packed in one. It's a kind of a lot of the time this is going to be a worse ruination. I'm not entirely sure how relevant the obliterate is going to be. I think, well, I don't think, but perhaps the, let's say the obliterate starts to find more value than just removal, just whatever the future kind of holds. Then, you know, this could be a pretty good card. You know, if cards like Trinomir exist. You know, Lidros, for example, like it, Obliterate does is a relevant keyword, but I'm just not sure how relevant it's going to be in most metas, if that makes sense. Like Obliterating units is pretty good for playing around lots of cards, but most of the time, just removing the unit is fine. So then you got to ask, how good is a 9 mana Obliterate 2 enemies? Well, it's still pretty good. 
it's still pretty good. It's good for like discovering this in certain matchups. Like it's not, this would not be a card that you ever would consider main deck, but the fact that it is a discoverable card from Invoke increases its playability dramatically since we're not always going to hit it and we might not always want to hit it, but every now and then you're going to pick it up and it's going to put in work. I would still say Ruination is generally a better card than Supernova until Obliterate is like the keyword that we need. Now, these, <laughs> these last few cards, <laughs> especially this one on the left here. So burst speed 10 mana spell up here. Fill your hand with random fleeting celestial cards, refill your mana. So you, if you have 10 mana, you re, you'll refill 10. If you have seven, if you've banked up mana, you re, refill seven. They are all fleeting. So this looks, okay, it's a really cool and fun card. It looks crazy, but you're not always gonna hit cheap units. So hear me out, like you might just hit a hand of expensive units and only get to play one or two maybe. You'll oftentimes find yourself having a good spread where you play like two cards from this, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna like oftentimes go crazy and just play shit tons of units, unless you have a way of reducing the cost of them, which we do in the Targon Allegiance card. But most of the time you'll play this, you'll maybe get given like a destroyer and let's say in that same selection, the puppy here, you'll play two units. Okay value. It's a little crazy. It looks a little crazy, but it's not as crazy as it might seem, but it, it's gonna be a ton of fun. And every now and then, you might just get that blowout where you find like an L, L, uh, I'm not gonna pronounce it in that language, but you'll find like the four mana card, a two mana card, a three mana card, you just like flood the board. Finding this is generally gonna be really good. Like, especially if you invoke into this and your other options just don't seem as valuable, you'll have that option to pick this up, kind of go for another invoke, sort of, and then find all these fleeting cards. Um, yeah, this card, <laughs> dude, these cards are insane, man. But to flip it back around and talk about these cards once again, the fact is we're not gonna hit these cards consistently unless we find an invoke card that allows us to discover from a certain pool of the higher value, then shit's gonna start getting really crazy. Next card, The Scourge, 10 mana, 10, 10 with Challenger. Seems vanilla. When I'm summoned, grant me plus one for each celestial card you've played this game. Attack, give other allies plus two, plus two and overwhelm this round. This is another finisher outside of the Destroyer. Destroyer is a singleton unit. Sometimes you'll just pick up the Scourge and buff your board. I don't know how relevant the Scourge is gonna be. I'm convinced games are gonna end around the Destroyer time. But this is another option that when it comes down to who has the better higher value invokes, you might just pick this up just cause in a half stone, I'm, I, I use a half stone as an example a lot of time because this is the most similar effect to discover, right? Oftentimes in some matchups, when you discover, it comes down to this picking the highest value, biggest units. And this is a big unit with a lot of value behind it. Even if you just get the 10-10 body, sometimes that's a little crazy too. But, you know, we'll wait and see. I'm convinced that like, with some of the options that we're starting to see, like if you make an invoke deck, you run some hushes, you maybe sometimes hit the 8-mana uh, spell here. You know, there might be a chance that we have answers to Ezreal and we're able to build a super greedy deck and that is going to be the most, the most wild meta We'll see for a long time. Like I'm, I'm convinced that the following expansions aren't gonna have as much hypiness as the Celestials. But you know, I don't want to like you know degrade or downsize Bruntero's potential because they've smashed this one, dude. Last and not least, the Great Beyond is just the final card revealed by Mogwai, as I'm just tuning into this now, which has a new keyword, which is called Fury. Fury is um. If I kill a unit, grant me plus one plus one, which is very irrelevant on this nine mana eight eight that has elusive and spell shield. It's not very irrelevant, it's a bonus, but there's gonna be other units I believe that have the Fury keyword. They utilize it a lot better and rewards trading. When I'm summoned, grant me plus one for each celestial card you've played. I am a dragon. Bonus keyword hidden in there. I am a dragon. <laughs> So Shivana and Aurelian Solo are eventually going to come and they're probably gonna have some sort of Fury Dragon synergy. Um, but in general, this is a nine mana eight eight with elusive ignoring everything else. 
<laughs> that is just crazy. There is some really insane finishes in here. And like in the end, the part I'm most excited about is the fact that these are all invoked cards, which means that a lot of the followers are being played that have invoke. Uh, as I said, they are followers, which means, you know, it, it opens up a lot of potential for casual players to build cheap invoke decks and just have a bloody brilliant time. Runeterra, you've smashed it out the park. I'm not sure how balanced these cards are going to be, but in terms of the casual player and the wide range of players, this is good shit. Thank you guys. My name is Fake Hero. Stay tuned. I'm sure in a couple of hours time, I'm going to have another video up, most likely talking about a brilliant soul. I'll see you next time.